Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and welcome to the second and final installation of Rest and Relaxation Reviews. <laughs> um, this is the final day here at the resort, and so I'm soaking in every last bit of it. But I actually have another Asher knife to talk about today. Um, yesterday I did my full review on the Nomad, and that knife was sent to me direct from Asher Knives, and I appreciate him doing that. Uh, this knife was sent to me by a buddy to check out. One of the friends who actually encouraged me to check out Asher Knives, uh, Lefty EDC. So he owns a couple of their knives already and has become kind of a fan of their work so far. And uh, this is their little titanium frame lock, which is still sub $100, uh, which is pretty fantastic considering uh, most titanium frame locks with S35 VN blade steel and over travel stops on bearings, etc. are not sub $100. So this is a pretty good value proposition in terms of the materials being offered from Asher. And uh, I've had a, a pretty good uh, full list of experiences with it so far. I, uh, I missed my first impressions on this one. I apologize for that. Uh, but now it's it's been long enough to do my full review. And I've got to get this knife back to left EDC. So we're going to go ahead and uh, just review this sucker. But as you can see, it is a flipper. Uh, the method of deployment is a flipper tab. As I mentioned, we're rocking S35 VN blade steel, just like the Nomad. Um, I think each of their models has S35 VN, unless I'm mistaken. We have a titanium frame lock, and it's well-finished titanium. Very simple, neutral handle shape. Nothing crazy happening here. The frame lock does have an over-travel stop, if I wrote, yep. It does have an over-travel stop and a stainless steel interface as well, and it functions quite well. Um, one of the reasons why Lefty EDC was very adamant I should check this out was not only because the materials being offered at the price point, but the action as well. Um, oftentimes, you get a really good action as you spend more, and budget pieces don't tend to have the smoothest actions, but the bearings on this one, it's really dialed quite well. It's not like the most free droppy knife I've ever felt. It's not the snappiest deployment I've ever felt, but given the cost that it's coming in at, it's an impressive action. Um, if I had experienced this knife a couple of years ago before, before being kind of deep into <laughs> the hobby like I am now, um, like at the time, my nicest knives would have been an old Benchmade Sentinel that was handed down to me from my dad, and I had a ZTO 350, which is spring assisted. Um, if I had experienced this back then, I would have been floored by it. Um, knowing what I know now about the whole world of knives, this isn't like the most exciting action in the world to me, but I'm impressed by it for the price that it comes in at. Um, yeah, so let's talk about kind of the a couple of features that I typically talk about, ergos, action, I guess I already kind of went over action, um, cutting ability, how it carries, all of that, and then I'll just kind of share my impressions of it. Um, so in terms of ergos, I actually quite like the ergos on this knife. I'm a fan, generally speaking, of pretty neutral handle shapes. I like when the place that I'm supposed to put my hand isn't overly like grooved and designed, just because that's kind of a, a bit of a dangerous game to play when designing a knife, in my opinion. You put a lot of grooves on something and then it only fits a certain portion of your audience's hands because they have to fit into the grooves. Uh, this being quite neutral, it's going to be comfortable for just about anybody. All the edges of the titanium are well chamfered. Nothing is sharp on here. Um, eh, almost nothing. The only thing that's really sharp on here, and it's not like crazy sharp. It's not even like a super hot spot or anything, but right where my pointer finger goes, right where the lock bar is cut out, and this is common on a lot of frame locks, just this very corner here is sharper than I would prefer. If they had knocked that down a little bit, I think it would go a long way um, if that was just rounded a little bit more because I do feel that spot more than anything else on the knife. It's not like it's going to cut me, um, but it does kind of dig into my finger a little bit, especially if I'm in a saber grip and applying downward pressure with my thumb. Just feel it a little bit more that way. Um, but yeah, overall the ergos are very good. A, a neutral handle does wonders for me. It's good in a reverse grip. Reverse grip draw cut, I start to feel the flipper tab a little bit, but it works. Uh, forward grip draw cut, 
totally good. Hammer grip, saber grip, it's all, all fine and dandy because there's nothing here that really polarizes the handle shape. Um, so yeah, I like the ergos. The action I'll touch on just a second more. Obviously, flipper tab. The flipper tab doesn't have any jimping or anything, but it's kind of a big flipper tab. Um, a lot of people mentioned in my unboxing of this knife, like, holy flipper tab, that thing is gigantic. And I think especially when the knife is open, it really just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. Um, when the knife is closed, it's still big. But for some reason, at least in my eye, when it's open, I notice it a lot more. Um, aesthetically, I'm not a huge fan of giant flipper tabs. I don't think that flipper tab looks good. <laughs> um, but it functions very well. Being this shape, it's kind of, in my opinion, works best for like a light switch pulling down. Um, but it works to push button as well, pushing straight in. Um, yeah, it's functional. I, I don't think, I think it could look cooler. Uh, but in terms of how it actually works, it works good. And when it is open, it does give you a nice big guard as well. So you're not going to slide your hand forward onto the blade of the knife. So uh, to some people, that's more important than others. To me, I guess it depends on the knife. This isn't a knife that I see as being overly tactical. This wouldn't be like a self-defense knife that I would grab for a self-defense type of situation. Um, although I guess whatever knife is in your pocket should be somewhat capable of that, arguably. Anyway, um, I just don't see this as being like a tactically inspired knife. And so tactical features like a, a big guard, it's neither here nor there for me. Um, yeah, I, I guess I'd say the action is very good for the money. Part of why it functions so well is because it has kind of an ugly flipper tap. If that flipper tap doesn't bother you aesthetically, then you'll probably love how well it works. Um, in the words of Nick Shabazz, it can be a bit of a pocket pecker, um, meaning when this knife is in my pocket and I reach in to get my wallet, which shares a pocket with prim my primary knife because I carry my wallet front right pocket, um, I can kind of feel that sometimes. If I run my pinky up against it, it's not exactly comfortable. It's not the most rounded flipper tab either, um, <clears throat> but it's not sharp either. It's not that big of a deal, um, especially because the profile of this knife is relatively narrow. So it, it's not like it's that cumbersome in pocket because of the flipper tab. Anyway, I think that covers the action. Um, let's talk about carry because we already started to touch on it with that. We have a loop over style deep carry clip. Um, just like I said on the Nomad, it's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine when there's a loop over style deep carry clip that doesn't go all the way to the butt of the knife. There's still material up above that's sticking out of your pocket. In my opinion, the point of a deep carry clip is to make the knife disappear down into your pocket out of view so that all you see is a clip. That's the way I interpret the, the reasoning behind a deep carry clip. Because if you had a not deep carry clip positioned towards the end of the knife, it would be the same amount of knife sticking out of your pocket as this, just by moving the clip actually to the end of the knife. So I don't know, it just if you're going to loop it over and make it so it's capable of going to the, the very end of the knife, make it go to the very end of the knife. Um, talking to Justin at Asher about that, just in some DMs yesterday actually on Instagram, um, I had mentioned that that was one of the things that I'm a little nitpicky about. Um, and he said he'd heard that from a couple of people, um, but for him personally, he likes to have a little bit of the knife to grab onto. I've heard that argument a bunch of times. I realize some people grab their knife that way. I do not. Um, I tend to grab either I like run my thumb all the way kind of down this face of the knife in my pocket and then I either grab from the bottom of the clip or if the clip doesn't have too much tension to keep me from doing it, I'll just kind of grab where like the hole of the clip is because I get a little bit of um, something to grab onto there and I pull straight up that way and that works for me. I just like when you can't see the knife sticking out of my pocket. I prefer for people to only see a clip, especially living in Southern California where some people are overly sensitive to such things. Um, but yeah, I, I get that it's a design choice to move it there. That's just, again, me reiterating my nitpickiness of deep carry clips that aren't actually deep carry. I don't see the point. I'd rather, like, not saying you're lying about it, companies that <laughs> do it, but it kind of feels like you're duping us, but it's like, oh, it's got a deep carry clip. It doesn't carry deep. So what's the point of making the clip loop over? I don't see a structural advantage to it. 
Anyway, that's just me. Um, so yeah, other than the clip, carry-wise, this knife is a pretty slim profile. I like that. I find that one of the biggest defining features of how, care, how comfortable a knife is to carry is how slim it is, at least for me. Um, it's just, it, it, it makes for a knife that you feel less. Um, this knife isn't super lightweight. Um, there's no internal milling or anything like that. These are just slabs of titanium. Um, they're not super thick titanium. They're not overly robust material. So it's not like way too heavy, um, but it's not a lightweight knife for its size either. Much like I said with the Nomad, both of them, I think a lot of that is probably to get to the price point that they're at. To get titanium, sub $100 with this blade steel and bearings and, and uh, all of these things that go into it, the machine time to mill out the internal portions of those scales would add cost. And then you wouldn't be sub $100 anymore, is I assume what's going on. Um, so what I prefer this knife if it did have extensive internal milling and was a whole ounce lighter, yeah, I, I like lightweight knives. I prefer it um, a lot of the time, but this knife isn't too heavy for what it is. Every time that I've carried it, it's been pleasant in pocket. It hasn't bothered me. Um, it doesn't feel like super noticeable, like, oh, I'm carrying a heavy knife today. I carry knives much heavier than this. They're just usually bigger than this if they're heavier than this. Um, so yeah, the profile is very smooth, very slim. The only thing that really sticks out in pocket is the flipper tab, which I already touched on, but it's not a huge deal. Um, and yeah, I, I, I enjoy the way this knife carries. I haven't had any issues with how it carries uh, whatsoever. So let's talk about my thoughts on the knife. Um, similar to the Nomad, actually. If you watched the Nomad video that I posted yesterday, then a lot of this will probably sound uh, remarkably the same. <laughs> but I think what Asher Knives is setting out to do is a very good thing for the consumer and should be encouraged to a degree. Um, their whole philosophy of bringing high level materials, at least relatively high, like I said yesterday, not like the most top tier, exotic, incredible materials. This isn't CPM 10V or Rex 121 or Van X blade steel. This is S35VN, which is a good blade steel. It's not the best in the world, but it's good. And for sub $100, S35VN is great. Once you start hitting 200 bucks, 250 bucks, then I start to expect, frankly, what I would consider better blade steels. But sub $100, it's very good. A titanium frame lock that functions well with a stainless steel insert and an over travel stop, that's, it's rare at this price point. And so the fact that Asher's coming in right off the bat with an offering like this, that's bringing this type of build with these type of materials and this type of action, uh, these finishing touches, it's all it's just very good to me. I like that they're playing that game because for the consumer, um, it just means more competition at this price point. And I, I've mentioned before, I see a lot of competition at the $50 or sub $50 budget knife kind of category. But if there's a lot of competition happening at the $75 to $100 <laughs> price point, I'm not really super aware of it. I'm aware of a few really good offerings in that price point, but a lot of the a lot of that range I, I don't see a lot of activity in. And so the fact that Asher is positioning themselves right there, I like. Um, frankly, I'm more compelled <laughs> by paying the extra instead of 50 bucks, paying 80 bucks or 90 bucks and getting way more knife than that, that budget sector below it. Um, don't get me wrong, there are great things at 50 bucks as well. And I, I enjoy knives at any price point as long as they're good knives. But yeah, I just like that Asher is playing this game, and I think that should be encouraged. Um, my only real nitpicks of the brand so far um, are frankly going to be a lot of the same things as what I found on the Nomad. Pretty much identical, actually. Um, this one being a different lock type, um, I actually really like the way this frame lock actuates, like to disengage the lock. That's the only spot where there's any jimping on the knife. It's got a little bit of um, this kind of it's almost raised rather than cut in 
jimping, but it gives you a nice portion to go ahead and access that frame lock and, and disengage it. Um, so I like that, whereas on the Nomad, there was a little bit of a sharp spot where the lock was. This doesn't have that. So the only real concerns I have on here, and they're not even necessarily concerns, would be the clip placement for me, I've already addressed. That's nitpicky, but I want it to come to the butt of the knife. And then the blade grind itself. Um, this one is even thicker than the Nomad is, and one of my complaints with the Nomad was how thick behind the edge it is, especially as you approach the tip on here. Right down here um, is where it's thinnest, and it's still uh, thicker than I would like to see. <laughs> um, this knife cuts. It has an edge on it. Uh, I believe this is still the factory edge. Uh, in fact, I, I'm almost positive it is. Um, and it, for all of the tasks I've put this knife through, it's been a, virtually the same as what I test any kind of EDC knife on. I've done some paper just to see how the edge does. I've done some cardboard, like continuous cutting. I've opened packages with it because my lifestyle is that I get a lot of packages, not just knives, but um, my wife has an Amazon problem. Not a problem, but we, we get a lot of packages. Like every day we get packages. So I open a lot of packages with my knives open packages with this one. Um, I've done a couple of zip ties and like some of my daughter's toys have like funky zip tie type plastic attachment points in them. I've done stuff like that. So I've, I've put this through kind of my full array of like EDC stuff without approaching like outdoor activities, EDC stuff. And it's acceptable for all of them. Um, if I didn't have a lot of knives, if I was just getting into knives and I got this one, I'd be like, yeah, it's sharp. I can feel that the edge is sharp. But in terms of how it like passes through cardboard and the ease with which it slices paper, it's not very, it doesn't have the type of edge I would really like for there to be on it or the geometry that I think would be most favorable for this type of knife. It's just a little thick behind the edge. And there are other EDC knives. I mentioned in my video yesterday, the Benchmade 940. One of my gripes with it is that it's thicker behind the edge than I would like for anything I would use the 940 for. This is kind of the same deal. It's just a little more robust behind the edge than I think is necessary on a knife like this. Um, part of that may be the, the grinding that is done on this blade is less expensive <laughs> than to put a really good like hollow grind on it to get it nice and thin behind the edge or even just to spend more time removing more material or whatever it would take to get it as thin as I would like it to be, it would probably be a little bit more expensive. So that's worth considering. Um, if this was my knife, I would try putting a new edge on it with the KME. I'm going to be doing that on the Nomad and I assume it'll probably perform a little better um, with an edge put on it at the degree per side that I prefer and uh, we'll see how that goes on the Nomad but I've had a, I actually mentioned that yesterday and a couple of people commented that they did add edges themselves onto the Nomad um, and I imagine there are people who have added edges onto this as well and that the performance did improve. So. Maybe that's something worth considering as well. If you're somebody who has a really good sharpening system, and my main gripe with the knife is that its cutting performance is lackluster, although acceptable, um, then you'll know that you're capable of enhancing that on your own. If you're somebody who doesn't have a means of sharpening a knife, um, then it's very important that the factory edge is really good. Although I'd encourage you to obtain a means of sharpening your knives because if you can't, then what happens when they go dull? Do you just throw them away? Do you have to send them out to somebody? That gets expensive over time. You might as well buy a system and do it yourself, in my opinion. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so if this clip could be moved to the butt of the knife, if the blade could be ground a little bit thinner and the geometry could be enhanced in that way, I think this would be much more of like a home run knife. Where it stands right now, I like it quite a bit. Um, it is a fun action, especially for the price. Um, it's one of those frame locks that you can just sit and fidget with and flick and drop over and over and over. And it's fun to do. Um, it's nice and smooth. It carries well. Um, it feels good in the hand. It's comfortable. There's no real hot spots save that one little sharp corner on the, uh, on the frame lock cutout. 
yeah, it functions well. It's stayed centered the entire time that I've had it in my possession with a bunch of playing, good amount of cutting, carried it. Um, so I like that. <laughs> it's a that, That's a good metric of <laughs> quality as well. I've had much more expensive knives that are much harder to keep on center, and this has been perfectly centered the whole time it's been in my possession. It locks up solid. Um, there's no blade play. That's very good. It feels very well locked in not front to back or side to side. I mean, it's it's very good. Um, if you're looking for a good user S35VN frame lock and you're on a budget, this is an excellent offering for it. I don't think it's the most attractive looking knife I've ever seen. Um, I don't think it looks bad either though. <laughs> it's just, it's hard to provide a lot of kind of quality and materials and then also make it a super out there design and like, uh, when you're playing at this price point, you got to kind of pick your battles, I think. And so I imagine that's where some of these choices were made, if I had to guess. Um, but compared to other knives in this range, it's very, very good. Um, yeah. So I guess that'll be that. That'll be my full review of the Asher Knives Silva. I want to thank again Lefty EDC for letting me borrow it to review. I'll link to him down below uh, so you can check him out on Instagram. He has become one of my good buddies in the community. I really appreciate him and uh, his willingness to loan me gear every now and then. So thank you guys for checking it out. And uh, that'll be that on this guy.